time to start our first webinar. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you hear me. And before I start, I would like to make sure that you hear me. So just send by chat, hi, hello. We are hearing you. We don't hear you. And then I will start. So I'm still waiting for some chat. Of course, uh, you can chat us anytime. We'll uh, reply it later after presentation. So my name is Krešim Žigić. I'm Deputy Director for Graduate Studies at CGI. Today we are going to present uh, our PG program to you. Uh, and after me, two colleagues of mine, Johanna from Graduate Office and, and Katarina, uh, she's a PG student, will be also at your disposal. Okay, so yes, Dmitri is hearing me fine. I hope uh, there are more people besides Dmitri. Please just write, hi, hello, we hear you. Uh -huh, there are two. Uh, well, let's wait for a few more and then, then I'll start, start with presentation. Well, presentation will be in, in of course, in PowerPoint, you, uh, you will be able to see presentation, not me. Uh, trust me, presentation is much more interesting than, than myself, watching myself. Okay, so Bogdan, Tural, Dmitri, I'm waiting for one more and I'll start. Hopefully, everybody else hears me, sees me, watches me. Okay, well, why don't I start? So here we go. So I hope you see this uh, first slide. Uh, uh, you might have heard about CGI, but in fact, this is abbreviation for Center for Economic Research and Graduate Education slash or, or dash Economic Institute. It's founded uh, 25 years ago. You see in the right upper corner, uh, the banner or the logo, 25 years of excellence in economics. So this year we are, we are very proud to celebrate this. And this is, as you already know, Western style graduate education in economics. Everything is done entirely in English. So, uh, CGI is a joint educational institution established by uh, both Charles University and Czech Academy of Sciences. In fact, it's common, uh, a common workplace between this institution. To be more precise, uh, CGI is also a legal entity in the in, uh, 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 US because we do have absolute uh, charter from the US Board of Regents, but I'll, I'll mention this a little bit later. So let me proceed. Well, why CGI is a unique place? So you see in this slide, this is our representative hall, and on this slide, you see Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel Prize laureate, lecturing at CGI. You can see me in the first row if you really want to see me. I'm, I'm just opposite of Professor Stiglitz. So uh, another Nobel Prize winner, uh, Professor Heckman from University of Chicago, mentioned that CGI has assembled a group of vigorous scholars who offer high quality training and access to frontier research in economics in Central Europe. Okay. So to be more precise, our faculty comes from school like Princeton University, University of Chicago, LSC, University of Michigan, and, and many others. This year, we were successful in hiring and hired a two young assistant professors, one from Northwestern University, and another from Warwick University in England. Well, uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at the very beginning, I guess I should mention also our executive and supervisory committee. This is. This is a very important body which takes care about promotion and strategy, uh, making strategic decision. As you can see, the first two names are Joseph Stiglitz and Christopher Sims. These are Nobel Prize laureates. Uh, probably it's good to know that this body meets twice a year. Uh, third name on the list is Alan Kruger, who used to be main economic advisor of Professor Obama, then Ori Aschenfelter, uh, who used to be chief and editor of the most, most prestigious uh, journal in economics, American Economic Review, and so forth, and, 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 and you can see the names. Okay, so let's move to our students, which we hope you will become soon and join us uh, in the fall. 
Well, <clears throat> here I prepared for you a citation of Professor Lester Taylor, who used to teach everywhere, including Harvard, Michigan, and Arizona. And as you can see, he said that he didn't see such a good group of students in his 42 years of, of career. So our students, uh, 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 as you can see from this chart, are coming from 35 countries, uh, virtually all over the world. And if you see the list of the countries, I probably should hide this uh, so that you can see the list. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, there are uh, 19 countries which are not in Europe. So, uh, uh, continuing with the students, there are around 170 students, and you see there is ideal uh, divide 50 50. And if you are not from economics, you don't have to worry because we have a long tradition of admitting students with math, math uh, technical, physical, or physical background in physics, well, because this. This background typically, uh, uh, these people from this background typically catch up and, and learn economic situation uh, uh, rather quickly. And, and, and uh, many of them, they want to change their career and pursue career as economists. And, and as an interesting fact, about 20% uh, of our students found their life partner at Sergii. So that's kind of a, a curiosity to note. So let's see where our graduate students work and uh, what is where they where they are located well here about the majority of uh, only remain in the region well to be more precise roughly half of of our students remain in the region when i when i mention region it means cee ce means central and and uh, eastern europe and former soviet union uh, uh, following chart, I guess, is much better, more more insightful. You can see that, that top academic placement. Well, our students, and there is roughly around 30% of our students who continue with academia. So uh, it's, I guess, impressive. It's Northwestern University is one of the top US universities. Tilburg University is top Dutch university. University of British Columbia is top Canadian university. University of Bonn is probably the best German university as far as economics is concerned. Top non-academic placement, as you see, well, all of you know the four most important international organizations, IMF, World Bank, EBRD, and OECD. So uh, uh, our, uh, our students, you know, they occupy a large spectrum in, in, in all these organizations, and, and, and some of them are already at manager, a top managerial position. Well, there is non-negligible shares of other students working in central banks, mostly in Czech central bank, but not only, and in, in various uh, government ministries and committees. Uh, some of them are very su successful in, in, in consulting, like in McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, this EY stands for Ernst and Young, KMPG and, and the like. And of course, in many private companies like, like banks, Ernst Group, or Moody's uh, rating agency, and, and so on. So, as you see, we are not only uh, uh, studying and working hard. We do some uh, recreation, like sport. There are bike trips. Uh, trips. We have a very, very by now famous softball team who already won some some trophies. You you see them on on on, on the on the photography here. We have some uh, basketball Fridays, yoga session, uh, running, ski trips, and the like. Of course, we run successful parties every September when the school starts. There's international food party. There are beer parties. The, tomorrow there is, there is a wine uh, wine tasting party because we have snapshots where our students and and faculty will will brief us about their their new research idea. And after this, there will be wine party. Then we have student club. In student club, in the morning, you you can go for nice coffee. In the night, uh, you can watch movies. And every year, uh, uh, in, in end of May, we organize uh, graduation gala where our uh, uh, both master and 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 PhD students celebrate their their achievement. Okay, let me say something about research and and, and ranks about CGI. And here I will cite François Bourguignon, uh, uh, once uh, uh, chief economist of World Bank. 
who's, who, who said that the graduate program and research team, the, uh, our research team, uh, is, is competitive by international standards, yet we managed to adapt uh, uh, this research and teaching uh, to the specific needs of this region. So, uh, <clears throat> by two rankings, one by SSRR and another by REPEC, well, SEARCH uh, uh, belongs to top 2% and top 5% respectively. And I already mentioned that, you know, we have U.S. absolute charter, uh, which is granted to us from New York uh, uh, State uh, Educational Department Board of Regents. So it means that once you get PhD at Sergi, you, you get not only Czech PhD, but also uh, US, US PhD. And needless to say, our faculty publishes in the, the very top uh, journals of profession like American Economic Review, Review of Economic Studies, Economic Journal, journal uh, 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 Econometrica, and, and the like. So, uh, uh, concerning academic events, we run over 50 research seminars and public lectures per year. Uh, in re recent couple of years, we had 14 Nobel laureates that visit us. We have distinguished speaker series, and Sergi is also uh, uh, known for running and organizing some international, small but prestigious international economic conference. Uh, also associated to, to Sergi is is uh, is a think tank idea, uh, abbreviation for Institute for Democracy and Economic Analysis, which is policy oriented and, and it very often comments and an analyzes uh, some burning issue in, in Czech economic life. Okay, as far as other resources, well, I'll first mention our library. We are proud that our library serves as official depository library, depository library of Czech Republic for the World Bank and UNCTAD. Uh, we have also academic skill center. Okay, this is uh, academic skill center is is uh, comprised of the group of uh, uh, professionals who are trained for for teaching not only English but also uh, how to to make uh, presentation English. All all of these people have a uh, English as their their native language. They teach you how to write, uh, let's say, research uh, research grant. They shoot you on camera to see how, what are, uh, how do you look like when you present stuff and things like this. And we have very, very, very uh, uh, nice and, and functional computer facilities and student offices, which are accessible 24 hours per day. And yes, uh, I mostly, uh, uh, basically entirely informed about PG in economics. I will skip uh, master uh, uh, MA in applied economics. This will be some other topic. And I should probably mes mention that we have a visiting master. This is this is program, uh, visiting master economics is a program uh, uh, run jointly by Institute of Economic Studies of Faculty of Social Science. And the idea is that, that you, as a bachelor, enter uh, at this program, but also register for the courses, for the courses at CGI, uh, and which will be later on recognized once you achieve uh, accomplished conditions to join CGI, because you know, uh, the current, current legislation is such that you have to have MA. But this is a nice way how to circumvent a uh, requirement that you have to have MA to, to enter CGI. You enter uh, uh, IES and then take courses with us, which gets recognized when you later join us. Okay, it was it was all from me for now. And, and uh, in a moment, I will now uh, uh, get you in connection with Johanna and, and uh, Katarina, who will uh, give you their angle of uh, PGS CGI. And of course, anytime you can send us your question and, and that's all. So long for now. So hello everybody, my name is Johanna Borovanska. I am the PhD Admissions and Development Coordinator here at CGI. 
And let me present you also Katya Kuyomina, who is our fifth year student. And Katya, Katya went through the preparatory semester, so she can tell you something more about this as a, as a part of the admission process. And, uh, and uh, Katya is also from, she's from Lithuania, so she can also comment on how it feels uh, to be a foreigner in Prague and to come to study here. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. So. So remove this so that you can be seen. Yeah. So uh, we will begin with our uh, presentation. So while you are opening, uh, I guess I will remind that you very much. We would very much expect your questions, and I see that you already posted one or two. Uh, please type them and send them via chat. We will for sure answer to them once we are finished with presentation. Okay, so uh, first I will tell you a few words about the PhD program and then we will get to the admission process. Um, as Katya mentioned, if you have any questions, just write them in the chat and we will answer them. Uh, we will answer them right we finish uh, our presentation. So, um, we wrote about our PhD program. Uh, why students come to study here? Mainly because students get here rigorous academic training here on a very high level very good quality and you get the uh, western style of education as Chris already mentioned uh, which means that the structure is the american style which means you get uh, you get a program in three semesters uh, per year you get the uh, courses you pass exams and then you follow up with your uh, with your dissertation research uh, our students, as already mentioned, usually pursue an academic career worldwide or work in the global organizations or central bank. Um, uh, as Krisha mentioned, uh, Sergia is a part of Charles University, but we, we get also, we are chartered by the New York State. That means that our students receive both degrees, the US degree and Czech degree. Uh, which is very useful because it opens the doors uh, worldwide. Mm. How long does it take to study here at SERGI? Um, the program, our program includes two years of uh, MA courses and uh, those courses, you pass them, you, you, um, you pass the exams, the general exams in the end, uh, and then you can follow with, uh, with your PhD dissertation research. Um, our uh, uh, our program guarantees you financial support uh, for usually five years in total. That covers those two years of MA courses and then then a uh, couple years of the research. Uh, then some students, if they need to study longer, uh, they can they can receive some extra support after that when they become junior researchers or so, for example. Um, our program also uh, stresses uh, study stays abroad of our students because we find it very important. We think that it's really important to have connections with other institutes, to have experience from other institutes and so on. So uh, we have connections with uh, the best US universities and European university, universities where we send our our students. So our students go to study at Harvard, Princeton, Stanford and Cambridge and so on for a semester or longer. Mm. You can also have a look on our website um, or in the section about mobilities where you can you, know, you can read more about about 
about experience of our students. Plus, on, also on our blog, you can read some articles about that. Um, sorry. Um, program structure. Um, well, first, like uh, when uh, uh, then being admitted to our PhD program, you can be either admitted directly or you are invited to the preparatory semester. Um, the preparatory semester takes place here at SERGI in July and August. Um, we provide some financial support for the travel expenses and, and so on. And uh, during the preparatory semester, you follow courses in uh, mathematics and, uh, and other. And in the end, you, you pass exams. And um, uh, after the results, some students are uh, admitted to our PhD program. Some some students are not admitted, of course. Um, this preparatory semester is not only for us to to find out on what level you are, but it's also for you group because it provides you some basic education in mathematics and economics, so you can see how we teach here on what level and so on. So you can also um, find out what it is to study here before actually um, being enrolled. Um, then when admitted, uh, in the first year, you can take courses of uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics, statistics and econometrics and academic writing. Those are the obligatory courses. After which you pass the core general exams. In the second year, there are elective courses um, and uh, you choose sequences of those courses. Now, for example, we have advanced econometrics, financial markets, cross-sectional econometrics, time series analysis, experimental economics, and so on. Uh, we also have combined skills and academic writings, which is provided by the Academic Skills Center, and it's supposed to help you with the, um, the methodological and, uh, and language uh, part of your research. Um, those ideas are important for you because uh, through this you can focus on some particular topic or field uh, uh, which then you will use for your dissertation research later. Uh, after that there are again general exams and uh, this is the end of your let's say coursework and after that uh, your research work begins in the third, fourth or later. Uh, yeah, um, there is one more obligation, and uh, this is it is to follow uh, research seminars. Um, and not only it's an obligation; it's also a very good advantage to learn what's being uh, recently done in in the field of economics around the world. Uh, plus, you are supposed to present your uh, your uh, dissertation proposal and then your uh, part of your dissertation, edit the dissertation proposal workshops and do a dissertation workshop. Uh, you work with your chair, uh, you, you discuss your thesis in these years, and then, of course, in the end, you're supposed to defend it in the fourth or higher year of studies. Maybe Katya uh, can tell you more about uh, the structure of the studies, about the elective courses, uh, and academic writing, or maybe about the dissertation workshop or the dissertation proposal workshop, how it goes, whether it is difficult or not. Right. So, yeah, I could comment on, on these particular subjects. I'm not sure you're interested. So please, like, write me a question about some particular subject or particular, you know, uh, obligation that we have to follow in, in the chat, and I will uh, for sure comment on that. Uh, I feel like telling you, you know, more how it feels to study at SERGI because as a student I get to talk to preparatory semester students or to potential applicants and very often they, they ask me this question so what is it like like is it different from you know our I will allow myself to say post-Soviet you know type of universities and whether it's actually hard so what I reply to this is, is usually the following <laughs> Um, I came, I'm from Lithuania, but I was doing my uh, first degree in Russia. And when I came here, I felt difference. Even though you, your life still consists of lectures, uh, exercise sessions that are given by other students who are on higher cohorts, 
uh, doing homeworks and passing exams. The difference is that here you are not, you know, a bunch of students. You are just 30 and you are a group of individuals. At least I felt that that's what professors and others, other people in the building like expected from us. They expected that we will be very uh, active, interested in, you know, the coursework, interested in research, asking questions, you know, getting into it because at the end of the day, this first two years when you work very hard, you know, to, to learn these things, to learn basics of uh, economic research, it's for you to prepare for your research and to find your path in economics. Um, now, the third and father years, uh, they are completely different because that's when you already work on your papers. So you basically organize your life. Uh, given the constraints that you have, and the constraints are the, your obligations. So on, in the beginning of third year, you have to present your research idea. In the end of, at the end of fourth, you have to present the, a ready paper, basically. But otherwise, you choose. You choose what you will do. You choose area, you choose topic, uh, research question, you choose professors with who you will be working. Uh, you choose how you work day-to-day -day basis. What's important is to, to do what you are required to do, to, to present, to write your papers. Now, regarding how hard it is or not, uh, it basically depends on your preparation. If you come from mathematics faculty or a very strong economic faculty, then you will find it easier and yet you will still face many, you know, struggles from time to time. If you are from a reasonably good economic faculty like I am, it wasn't very, you know, mass oriented. Uh, it will be rather hard. I don't, you know, I never say that it's not hard because it's not true. Like I, I want to be true to you. Uh, it's really hard. Like in, in my cohort, we had this group of students. I was part of it. We would be here from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We would do homeworks, you know, study the lectures, teach each other. Uh, it was very hard, very challenging and intense, but I can tell you that no one from those people ever regretted that they went through it because you learn so many things. Uh, not only you learn these basics, but also you kind of you develop your thinking, your speech, you know, ideas. It's very rewarding and for sure worth it. I could comment a bit more. But I really encourage you to like ask specific questions. What what is it that you want to know about dissertation proposal or or uh, other things? And we will for sure reply them after we finish presentation, if you don't mind. Or Johanna, you think I should answer now already? Uh, as you want, if you want to. Okay, I will try to reply now because it seems like we have very relevant questions. So, question is: Can students take classes, for example, at Charles University in Prague? Uh, I think I can answer this. Uh, you can you can take some classes at the Charles University, but it doesn't. It's not a part of our curriculum, so we can take it ex, as an extra uh, extra voluntary course. Um, from from me, I can say that you will never like think of that because you will be so busy with what you do here, and I I don't know why exactly you ask this question. Uh, because usually I think other students like from IES, they come to Sergei to, to sit at classes because like our professors are better. <laughs> okay, so, so technically they can, right? But I don't think, like one thing that we did uh, was this um, Czech course, but I think professor was coming to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like short answer would be you can, but you will not want. Then there's another question, can students take classes for example, um, sorry, this is repeated. Um, how do you consider math or economics background is more important? Uh, I think I can try to, yes. So, uh, depends what you mean important. Honestly, my feeling is that it's better to come with mathematical background because it's, uh, it's kind of easier for you because, you know, you have to solve these models and you are uh, ready to, you know, get into it and not just follow the mathematics, you know, steps. Uh, those who come from econo economic background, usually it happens that the, the things you learned at your school, they are not same as what you learn here, mostly. 
So you not you only also have to like learn these new economic things. Plus you have to be able to follow all these mathematical steps. So it's kind of more difficult for you, but it's all doable. You will have to work hard, but it's doable. <laughs> Trust me. And we can also answer Scott's questions. Are there check classes? No, everything is in English. Oh, I mean, I think he means uh, Czech uh, language Czech course. Language. I think it can be arranged at the Czech Academy of Sciences as, as it was in the past that uh, our students could follow uh, classes of Czech language there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then there is another question regarding uh, stipend, whether it's enough. We will be covering it just in a couple of slides, so please wait a bit. Mm -hmm. And one more Scott's question. Uh, how many electives are required? Uh, I think we have to we have to choose three uh, sequences. Uh, so it's yeah, three classes per semester, but you can choose more. But again, you will not want <laughs> so three sequences. Okay, so we can continue. Uh, few words about our rec recent. Uh, hope you hear me. A uh, few words about our recent dissertation topics. Um, you can see the really current um, current uh, dissertation topics that are that just have been defended or are about to be defended soon. Uh, it's on the existence of the premium for being free or irrational, irrationality, which is uh, irrationality is a big topic here at CERGDI currently because uh, Solet Matejka, one of our Faculty members just okay, just uh, got a big grant, European grant. Um, uh, so there's gonna be a lots of research activities on this topic, and here you can see others. Uh, for example, if you if you have a look on the last one, female taxation and the female labor supply evidence from the Czech Republic, I think this is the topic, the solution topic of Clara Kaliskova, who just got a, a publication in very, very good. Uh, Good uh, journal, economics journal, and maybe uh, Katya may add something more. Right. So, I, like the full uh, uh, list of, of dissertations and, and papers you can find online on, on the website for sure. Uh, what I could say here is that your topic, topic of your dissertation, depends mostly on you. Like you choose it. Uh, usually it works that you kind of, when you study, you see what professors there are, what they do, and you kind of choose something in, in those lines, because you know that then the professor will be able to supervise you very well. But I don't think there was any student, you know, who couldn't choose topic for him or herself. Like, it's never a problem, and we have very diverse topics in my cohort as well. But hey, it's still a long way to get there, <laughs> there are these first years. Mm -hmm. So I, I see the question, uh, can I work in U.S. after getting PhD at CERGI? So the answer is yes, yes, because you get U.S. degree. Yeah, our, yeah. Uh, our students receive all degrees, uh, Czech and U.S. Uh, this is very important because uh, our students usually go to the uh, job market, in, uh, which takes place every year in, uh, in U.S., and there's this PhD students or graduates are recruited by uh, by um, by universities from Europe and US. So this is very very crucial, very important. And we get our students very successful. Recently, they have been recruited for uh, uh, Ludwig Maximilians University in um, in uh, München in Germany. Then uh, another one for the university in Florence in Italy, and and so on. Um, now we can get to the tuition and financial support, which probably might interest you. So uh, we provide for tuition waivers for most students. If you if you meet the requirements, which means that you are a master's student and you you pass the uh, the entrance exams, then uh, you can be almost sure that that you will receive a full tuition waiver. Plus, we, uh, we provide performance-based stipends, so all students receive stipends. Uh, and the, the amount of the stipend depends on, uh, on your um, study results and, and, and other results. We also provide teaching fellowships um, because we have a foundation, uh, so a foundation that, um, that 
uh, organizes this teaching fellowships program, which is a huge program, not only for our students, but also from students from other universities. Uh, and this is to, to provide you special funding to, to teach a course in, uh, in the region uh, and so on. We also provide some assistant bonuses like teaching assistant bonuses and research, research assistantship bonuses, uh, which is an internal thing. So if you, if you, if you teach uh, exercises here or if you, if you work on uh, research with some of our faculty members, we provide you extra bonuses for that. Then we also um, like we look um, let's say we look after our students, so we we provide some extra money also on the practical level, which means uh, that we cover medical insurance and public transport uh, as well. And of course, there's no application fee, uh, so like and all application is online now, so we don't need to spend money on that at all. Maybe Katja can, can tell you more how it is with living expenses here in Prague from the students' point of view. Right, we already had question even. <laughs> so it's hard for me to say whether it's enough or not, just you know, like that, because it's very individual. What I can tell you is that I don't think I know any student who would be, you know, supported by their parents while they are studying here at Sergi, you know, for the daily expenses. Uh, and uh, for sure, if you live in dormitory, if you, you know, don't go to party every day, you know, to a nightclub or you just have a regular lunch, not, you know, in some fancy restaurant, it's for sure enough. Even we have smokers who also, you know, somehow meet the ends, even though cigarettes are very expensive here. Uh, if you want to rent apartment, it's it will be harder. Uh, but I would say in the first two years, you really don't have time for anything so i would say it's enough like for average student it is enough yes i even managed to say but i guess i'm a very extreme case mm -hmm. and we have here one more question regarding regarding the courses uh whether we offer elective courses in development economics particular poverty related topics uh this particular not actually not at the moment but maybe i think there is somebody who is to, uh, working on a real, related topic uh no professor bauer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, professor bauer. Mm -hmm. like from my experience i would tell you that if you really want some course you can try and get it like we can ask for courses sometimes and if there is a professor who could teach it it's possible that this course will be organized for your cohort Mm -hmm. The best and, thing is to go online and to click on people there you can see the research fields of our faculty members. And we also have another question, which is, can you tell us some details about accommodation? Uh, so I can guess what you exactly you want to hear. Uh, I will be like talking in general about uh, dormitory, but if I don't cover this particular thing that you want to hear, write again, okay? So all students, when they come, they, they go to this dormitory. Uh, it's located in a suburb of Prague, but you take a train and in 15 minutes you are at school. It's very comfortable. There are also two other ways to get to school. It takes like 30 to 40 minutes. So it's for sure very comfortable. No worries about that. Now, dormitory itself, um, it, it is, you know, it's average, I would say. It's, let's say, better than in Russia. That's what I can compare. It's probably worse than somewhere else. So what we have there is, is you have pretty small, but I would say enough room for two people. You have bathroom uh, and shower there. You have one small kitchen for 10 rooms on the floor. Uh, furniture is new, so all you, you know you have all the basic things you would need in your room uh, the only drawback i would say is kitchen because it's really pretty small but as i say i never needed it actually because we would be always at surgi we would you know go to um, canteen to eat or you know just to regular store um, but i would say it's worth the money <laughs> for sure because it's not very expensive and yeah the alternative is much more expensive and hard to find. So I would say it's average. Mm -hmm. I see a question on uh, 
on uh, apostolic copies and so on. You'll get to that later when you get to you know to the admissions uh, process. Enrollment requirements. Uh, so what we require? That's the master's degree or equivalent, sufficient English proficiency, and strong mathematical background. Uh, Katya right. commented the mathematics right maybe you want to add something else yes i, I can add something else also many students worry about like the, their preparedness for surgi uh, in terms of english and math that's very common worry uh, so i can give you like example regarding english i think it's important to have a very good like basis um in my cohort on prep we had one student who has who had very good mathematical background and I think she had also good English basis, but she couldn't talk because it was hard to her. Like she never had to talk before. So it was hard. She would listen, she would understand, she would read book, she would understand. But to, to say something, it took her some time kind of to, to get used to it. But in the end, she, she learned like once you are here and uh, you only listen and hear this and talk to your classmates in English, you learn it. And if in the beginning you do some small mistakes, don't worry, you will you will catch up. It's important to like have basis. And maths, uh, of course, it's good. the better you're prepared in terms of maths, the better for you. But you know, I think it's good to have you know mathematical brain, what I call it. You don't have to know all these things. You will learn them here, but you have to be able to to learn them, right? So you know about yourself. You know how you were doing uh, at school or or uh, in your university, whether you were able to learn new things in maths, that's the indicator whether you will manage it here. I would say you will if you work hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have one more question concerning the dormitories. How much does it cost? Uh, before Katya tells I, you, like yeah. Asha mentioned that uh, the dormitories are uh, in the property of Charles University and Charles University, since we are part of the Charles University, provides um, accommodation stipends to our students, so we don't have to cover the whole amount. And Katya, do you remember how much? Uh, I think, uh, well, a couple of years ago, it was 3,000 crowns per month. I, I think now it might have raised to 3.4 maybe, but no, I don't think. I, I think it's like around 3,000. Yeah. I think it was like 25% of stipend at that time. Mm -hmm. I think so. If you, if you if you want to know the exact amount, please uh, contact us on PhD at SirGI. Right. Um, and uh, we will send you the exact amount. So I don't have it in my mind now. Sorry for that. Uh, now we get to the application. So what you need to provide us with? Fill in the application form uh, and add required documents. Please do not submit the application form before <coughs> uploading the documents because when you when you submit the online application form, you cannot enter it anymore. You cannot modify anything. So uh, and you cannot upload anything after that. So please first fill it in, uh, upload all documents and then submit it. Uh, the documents we require are curriculum vitae, statement of motivation, two letters of recommendation, and verified copies of your bachelor and master diplomas and transcripts. Uh, the letters of recommendation, how does it work? Uh, you fill in a uh, referee's email address uh, in your application form, and once you submit the application form, uh, an automatic email is sent to your referees with an online um, letter of recommendation form and they fill it in and we receive it. Uh, you can check then in your application form whether whether we have received or not those letters of recommendation. Uh, since the this request for the letter uh, for the letters of recommendation is sent only after you submit the application form, please don't leave it um, for the very last days because uh, you need to give some some time to your referee. So we really uh, recommend to uh, to submit the online application as soon as possible so that you your referees have time enough to write your letters of recommendation. Uh, and we can get to this uh, to this uh, verification question. It is uh, 
it's very recommended uh, to uh, to upload to upload upload sorry to upload the verified copies. Uh, it can smooth the process uh, a lot because if you if you want to study in Czech Republic, you need to have your diplomas nostrified. We provide assistance with that, so we don't need to care about the nostrification. But in order to receive the nostrification for your diplomas, we need to have your, your copies verified. Mm -hmm. The type of verification uh, depends on the country that you studied. So uh, you probably all have seen um, our guideline, verification guideline, where you can have a look on your country and see what type of verification you need. In case that uh, the verification takes more time and you wouldn't receive it in time by our deadline, um, you can upload just a plain copy, regular copy, and then provide us with, uh, with the verified copy later. You will, be, you will be asked to provide us later when you come uh, for the preparatory semester latest or when you come and you are admitted. But uh, definitely you will need to provide us with that uh, before being enrolled in the program because without that uh, uh, you cannot study in the Republic. Um, so I hope I have clarified that. An important date is April 30. That's the deadline for application form. But again, uh, please do, do submit your application form earlier because uh, mm, because uh, mm, the online application form, uh, the application is considered uh, um, final if you have all or complete if you have all all the required um, uh, documents. Um, as mentioned, it's all online and there is no fee, so you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, face any any problems. Um, I hope I have covered also the questions of Scott, uh, who is asking about the apostate copies um, and uh, transcripts. So this is what I mentioned before. If it takes too long, if you, if you don't meet the meet our deadline with that, please upload just the plain copy and then then provide us with the with the verified copy later. Mm -hmm. And um, now important question. Why you should choose PhD program at SearchYard? Why we think that you should choose our PhD program? So, as already mentioned by uh, by Kershaw, it's uh, probably the best PhD program in economics in Central Europe. We really stress uh, that uh, education in our institutions is, is of very high quality. Um, we provide both US and Czech degrees, so it opens your door doors worldwide, not only in academic sphere, but also in an um, in international organization and business sphere. Uh, we provide really top quality education, comparable with other Western uh, PhD programs. Uh, we provide sufficient scholarships and stipends. Uh, we really stress this. We really want our students to, to spend some time of for their study programs uh, abroad at the best US and European universities. Um, of course, we provide opportunity to conduct top economic research because our faculty members have really, really good education and research uh, results. Plus, uh, we collaborate with many uh, important institutions from US and Europe. So there's, uh, there are lots of opportunities what to focus on your research. Uh, and we have really rich resources, the best resources in, in the region. So we have the largest library here. Uh, we have lots of uh, online um, online sources, uh, catalogs. We have also contact with Nobel Prize laureates who come uh, time to time to to give lecture here and uh, and so on. Maybe Katja can. Uh, add some comments on, on what we have in our library or what we, what we can meet here. Well, many students like, like our library, even from, from other faculties in, in uh, Czech University. It's very rich in terms of books. What I find most you know, useful for me is that we have access to 
almost all scientific papers published in the economic field, uh, which is very important when you work on your research. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And last but not least is the location. <laughs> the location, the center of Prague. Maybe Katya can, can yes. tell you her impression. <laughs> right, I am like foreigner. foreigner. <laughs> so I would say that it's very comfortable to live here. I never had, you know, problem. I never actually felt very much foreigner because everything like public transportation is, is comfortable. Everybody's almost everybody speaks English if you want. Like you, you never have a problem to, to, you know, to get information or, or do what you need. So it's really welcoming and, and comfortable to live here. Um, let's focus on uh, educational and research activities that we that we offer. Additionally, uh, Sergia has got a Coursera Learning Hub here in Prague, which means that uh, you probably all know the uh, Coursera courses that are available online. And Coursera Learning Hub uh, is here to help you to follow those online courses. So we choose interesting courses that run that, that are run by Coursera and we provide those sessions that are supposed to help you go through the course to pass the test uh, and to um, to get more from it because those courses are run by experienced tutors uh, you meet there with other students uh, who are interested in the topic you can discuss the problems and questions related to the topics so for example, now, uh, very soon is coming the R programming course, which is very popular. And in fall, we plan to have the machine learning course. So this is just to let you know what currently we are working on. Then we also organize special workshops uh, that are very special because they are developed by our PhD students, current students, or even alumni. And they are designed for, usually for MA students master students who are interested in economical research, but uh, some of the workshops are designed for other PhD students, it depends. So for example, now uh, there's, there, there's coming course on uh, determinants of life satisfaction and an empirical example using STATA. So it's a workshop on STATA, how to use STATA, how to work through STATA uh, uh, on, on one particular topic. And then there is also a workshop on attention discrimination from a research idea to a publication in the American Economic Review that's run by our PhD student Wojtek Bartosz, who already been being a PhD student, got a publication in such a top, uh, top journal. So both will be very soon in March. Then we run uh, the worldwide new economic talent competition uh, for bachelor and master students and fresh graduates up to one year from graduation. So if you are currently finishing your master's, master's studies or have finished, uh, we encourage you to, to take part in it because not only that you can win some, some amount of money as a, as a award, you if, if you, uh, if you become one of the finalists are invited here to Prague to Sergei to present your, your work, your paper, you get feedback from the best economists here, not only from Sergei, but also from visiting um, teachers from US or Europe. And uh, that's from what we have heard from uh, from finals from uh, from the previous years. This is the most rewarding because you, you get really um, really detailed feedback on your work. It can help you to to move further in your research. Also, if you go on our blog, you can read an um, article about Salim Turdaliev, who, who was uh, one of the finalists two years ago, and now, he's our, now he became our student. So you can read how, how it was like and what it brought to his life to participate in this competition. Then, as already mentioned, we organize research seminars, conferences, many conferences here, distinguished speaker series. We invite special guests from, from very good universities and research institutes. 
including, of course, Nobel laureates. And we have the think tank idea that uh, that Chris already mentioned. I don't know whether Katya wants to add anything to this. Well, yeah, the, this um, Nobel laureates who come and talk, you know, it's it's very impressive. You know, you are in the same room with this celebrated people. You feel good. You know, you learn things from them. So it, it's kind of inspiring to, to be on one of these lectures because you can you, you can touch it mostly you can touch this big research and, and you understand that you you can also you know be close to that so yeah it, these are usually very inspiring events for us students mm -hmm. and you can go to the social life of Sergia Krishnod mentioned those activities so I think I will pass the work to Katya <laughs> and tell you more about the student activities. Right, so yeah, this is a very important part of life here at CGI because when you are you know, doing your homeworks, you want to distract yourself a bit. And yeah, and, and it's, it's useful to have something organized. So what I uh, get involved in is the sports activities. We have so many of them. I think I wouldn't remember all of them now. What I do is I go to yoga and other uh, fitness classes in, in a gym that is basically next door to school. Uh, I also play squash that is reimbursed. It's also very close to Sergi. I know many people like to play football and basketball on a weekly basis. It's very fun. So there are plenty of you know opportunities to, to distract yourself and, and be more efficient after that in, in doing their homeworks. Uh, many students are crazy about these beer parties. Uh, this is an event that takes place once per semester, am I right? Um, yeah, when faculty, students, staff, everybody goes to a pub that's booked for us. And yeah, it's regular loud party with a lot of beer, if you want. Uh, I am more into food party. This is uh, an event that takes place in fall, once per year. Since we have new blood in the institution, new, new people from countries, sometimes new countries also, uh, we like to organize this event. Uh, and this is about you know, cooking special things from, from your country or bringing you know, some wine or, or, or some food such that everybody can taste it and, and say how good it, it feels. <laughs> uh, also, we have the student club, as, as mentioned here. So there we have uh, the stable uh, for uh, for football also fun to play just take your classmate and go there or table tennis yeah so as i said many opportunities to distract yourself and have fun and you know make friends mm -hmm. thank you um here's the new economic talent uh, slide so you can see the the website there you can read the conditions and more information. So we really encourage you to participate. And that's it. That's the end of our presentation. And I now invite Krisha to join us. And we will all uh, together answer the rest of your questions that have not been covered yet. So. Um, Okay, so I will read the questions and we will go, we'll go through them and we'll answer them. So uh, from the questions which we haven't covered yet, um, there is, what are the keys to success in the application process? Thank both Krisha and Katya. I didn't hear the question. I didn't hear the question. Uh, what are the keys to success in application process? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Key, I guess, is a very good motivation letter. If we uh, see that you are really motivated, that you uh, would like to do research in, in economics, to become an economist, and if you already spot some interesting issues in economics, then, then you know. We are very impressed. Now, now we, as a faculty, receive a bunch of emails uh, from potential students, and, and, and quite some of them already published or, uh, or wrote some papers, which are very interesting. One, and, and, and we just encourage the students to, to apply. 
Well, of course, if you don't have any any paper now, don't desperate. Of course, there is time to write this, but but we need to show uh, to see that 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 you display that you show some some motivation to to join us. Katya, would you add something about this? Well, for me, it's hard to say. I'm not in the admissions committee, so I don't really know what <laughs> what you pay attention to, but. I had all the feeling that motivation letter is very important. And what was important for me as for a graduate from, as I said, post-Soviet type of university where, you know, we have to write millions of pages of something when we write it, it was very important to be constructive in this motivation letter, like to be very much to the point, to, to kind of think of the questions that you want to kind of cover in your motivation letter and, and just reply to them. I think I had questions like why I will be a good student, why I will be suitable at 3GI, why I want to go, uh, what kind of person I am, and, and that I'm yeah, interested in research. But like very much to the point. And of course, uh, letters of recommendations uh, by your professors are of some importance as well in your, your, your transcript of your grades. Mm -hmm. And regarding the letter of motivation, uh, the letter of motivation, we provide guideline on this, so you might follow this. It might be really helpful for you. Okay, we may go to another question. Uh, are all admission de decisions made after the close date in April, or an or an application by application basis? Well, um, the admission committee gets all documents. Uh, in one time and then makes decisions. So um, the formal control is being done uh, continuously, of course, to smooth, to smooth the process, but then the admission committee needs to make the decision uh, based on all, all the applications. Yes. Um, are there any field trips related with courses in Czech companies or other international companies? No, we are not business or management, we are economics. So there are trips, there's, these trips are called, you can call them study abroad, I call them mobilities, where you go to the best universities. If you convince us with your dissertation, proposal, workshop, presentation, that you have a, a very important topic, a topic which is very well elaborated and that you would like to work on it with the best people in the world, uh, be sure that we will just arrange this for you, as we did it so far, because we call that we have this executive, executive supervisory committee people, two Nobel Prize lawyers there, and we have connection basically to all top economists in the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question is, can you provide some brief information regarding credits related with courses? We are currently in, uh, in, in the current accreditation of our program, uh, there are no credits. So there is a study plan, which includes the obligatory courses and the uh, elective courses. But you don't have to care about, about credits and so on. Yeah, we are not related to Bologna mm -hmm. very much because we, uh, even though we formally follow Charles University rules, uh, we stick to US accreditation. We are basically US accredited PhD pretty much the same structure as, as, as in Princeton, which was at the beginning uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, our patron in, in, when we started PhD. And Princeton Econ Department is, as you know, one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other questions? Let's just go through the questions you already asked to check whether we covered all of them. Meanwhile, we have time to write new questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so far, uh, so far we covered all questions. So if you have any other questions, just feel free to ask. Um, do you have anything else you would like to add? You would like to, the applicants to know about your GI and an important note, final note? I yeah, guess you are quite exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. But probably always, 
one can miss something. So I, I think I should mention that uh, although our program is quite demanding, as Katya already let you know, uh, it's rewarding. And you can see it if you go on our alumni profile on our website. You can see it. You can see your placements. You can see what career they take. And especially if you if you wish to pursue your academic career, it's a really good place to study here. This is what we focus on. And if I may add, I hope that Katya didn't uh, scare you with math. Yeah, math. Math is important, but we are not study of math. Okay, math is yeah. rather a tool, not a purpose per se. So it's doable. You can just master it. So. Uh, if you have interesting economic issue, well, don't worry about math. You will you will just uh, learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, from my side, I can say that if you further have some practical questions that a student can apply, I would advise you to you know just go to website, find a list yes. of students, and write email or Facebook message to any of them. I'm sure they will reply. For sure, I will reply. My full name is Yekaterina Kulomina. You can write me. A, I it, it's not a problem for me to reply. Or browse our web page in details. There's a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> or write to, to Johanna and other yeah. ladies from graduate office. Yeah, just send us email on the PhD and uh, we will answer. And also, I think very good to have a look on our website is to go to people there you can there you can see uh, the research fields of our faculty members. Plus, if you go on the student sections and uh, research section, you can see uh, you can see the dissert dissertations. Not only the topics, but also the dis the dissertation text text. So you, you can see what our students do here, what are the results, and so on. So I think uh, there are no more questions coming. So we can uh, we can end our presentation. We thank you Very thank good. you for attention for, for being with us, and we hope to hear from you. So on through the application. We are waiting for you. <laughs> and if you have any other questions, just contact us by email. Goodbye. Bye.